Hello everyone, I'm Alita Carter, the CEO and founder of the Commission for Health. Please feel free to subscribe to my YouTube channel. Subscribe, 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 comment, share. We want to have active engagement and we really want to be able to get this information out there so that everyone is able to teach, educate their own family members and loved ones and to do it in a fun way. So some of the things that we use when we're teaching vocabulary in math our abcmouse.com, we use phone letters and numbers when it comes to bath time to go over the basics of counting, addition, subtraction, phonics, and spelling. We use starfall.com, which is actually something that we started using more recently um, after the public school system shut down and a lot of the daycares also closed due to COVID-19 and we also do reading time every single day and we allow our children to pick out whichever books it is that they want to have read to them and we actually will give the books to them and allow them to read the books to us even if it's baby talk it still counts as pre-reading it's the child engaging with the reading content and you at the same time and so it really helps to keep them excited and motivated about learning and so um, I'm actually going to pull in some of the video clips from my daughter and us working with her or her brother throughout the week just so that you guys can kind of get a feel of how we keep things um, interesting and something else that we do we actually because of my daughter having the um, mild hearing impairment when she was younger we use sign language and we teach sign language to our one-year-old and so other things that we have done would be labeling of household items like we type it up and on a word processor on our computer we print it use a laminator laminate the sheet of paper cut it out and then tape it to the item so like we will literally spell chair put a image of a chair to a chair and we've done it with like soap we've done it with our couch and you can also teach foreign languages in the same manner. If you don't want to spell these words in English, you can put the Spanish version or the Japanese version, whatever language it is that you're trying to teach, you can use the same mechanisms. And so we are going to kind of dive right in. And I am going to also post web links to the materials or resources that we use or similar resources. And I'm trying to think did i forget anything else i always we do so much without even noticing it so we did abc mouse starfall.com we do the reading we do the phone letters and the phone numbers is there yeah, anything on, else math on everything practical so oh with cooking and stuff like that yeah so we use cooking to teach math and vocabulary we also use it to teach hand washing and hand hygiene and it's a very good way to do that and oh zingo 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 the math version that we also use that so zingo is very good and reese loves it um xander hasn't quite gotten to that point yet we're still just trying to teach him how to count but we plan on using it with him as well finding games for math like bowling yeah oh so finding games for math like bowling or even like basketball right so you can teach them, teach them to count by how many points they make or how many times the ball goes into the basketball hoop so you can really teach these things in fun ways and it's really exciting because sometimes they don't get it right away and that's okay you really just want to keep practicing and then eventually that light bulb moment will happen and it's so awesome because like they know when they get it and their little faces light up and their little eyes light up and it it totally makes me understand why teachers continue to do what they do despite the multiple barriers or difficult situations that they may be put in so just remember that when you're working with your child the goal is not perfection the goal is practice and eventually that practice will build into a skill and a knowledge or a, a knowledge base that you will later build upon okay so don't be hard on your child don't be so strict or structured to the point where it makes it boring things don't have to be done textbook even if you find it in a textbook try and find a way to make it not in a textbook so that it's not so boring 
Oh, and your child's learning style. That is so important. So I'm gonna paste a web link to how to assess your child's learning style. This is very important because when Reese was younger, we actually, as her parents, we picked up on her learning styles, which for the most part, she's a kinesthetic learner, so am I, so she gets in honestly. She really, really needs hands-on experience in order to get things quickly. So we can read to her, we can show her things, but if we really want her to get it like rapidly, we have to do something that uh, involves hands-on experience or hands-on application. So I am glad that you watched this episode and I hope that you enjoyed it. Please like me on Facebook, The Commission for Health. Find me on Instagram and follow me, Commission for Health. And visit my website, www.commissionforhealth.com. And I also have a blog within my website. So please share, like, comment, and I hope you stay tuned for the next episode. Thanks, everyone. Bye.